Hello, Sim here. Duma OS for the R1 has now finally arrived, and it is in open beta as of October the 11th. In this video, I'm going to give you my initial impressions of Duma OS for the R1, as I've been beta testing this for about the past month, and now that it's in open beta, I can talk about it. So if you want to keep informed about NetDuma and like to see easy to understand NetDuma tutorials, consider hitting that subscribe button. As I mentioned, this is going to be an impression video. What do I like about it? What do I not? A full step through the interface will be in a future video. So installing it is fairly straightforward, provided that your R1 doesn't have an old firmware on it. Hence, NetDuma is doing a batch rollout, which is controlled to ensure that no user experiences difficulties. I updated from 1.03.6i. The update went very smooth and a lot of my settings were kept. When devices got used later, post another reboot of the router or that device, they came up and got named correctly, like the Xbox One X, for example. So all you gotta do is go to the upgrade page, untick the check version, select the firmware file that you've previously downloaded, and voila, go and click that upgrade button. Now the actual firmware upgrade part of the process took in my case one and a half minutes. After that, you get presented with a blank dashboard which you can customize. And you got to see the customized version of my dashboard at the beginning of this video. There is no miscellaneous settings page for a reboot. You simply go and click on the eye at the top of the page for info, which confirms what firmware version you're doing, gives you some forum links and stuff like that. And you can reboot from here. And as well, you can do a factory reset if that is ever required. The update button, or should it be called the upgrade button, is right next to that little eye button. And again, it's fairly straightforward to go and update the latest firmware from here. You can also downgrade to the traditional R1 firmware, and I've tested that and I'll show you that later in the video. The person icon next to that is where you enter your login details. So if you want to stop others from messing around with your R1 settings, or mischievous kids from unblocking their internet devices which you've blocked because it's their bedtime, that's where you go and set your username and password. The notifications is a future feature and does absolutely nothing right now. So the footage you're watching in the background is me having a quick look around on a Duma OS on the R1, and everything was relatively straightforward having played around with Duma OS before on the XR500. Here and there I suspect I'll speed up some footage. What I was really interested in was good old buffer bloat control. And you see me ascertain the bandwidth, see what my pings were with no control in place, pump in, you know, type in those maximum bandwidth values into the Duma OS, set the sliders to 70% and rerun the test. Now, as you guys know who follow me, I've been having issues with my internet because I've moved house and yes, several engineers later, I'm hoping to have my internet fixed. So I really wasn't expecting too much, but I was actually pleasantly surprised and I got probably the best ping control I've had since I've moved into this house. So yeah, I was a happy bunny. So an important note um, that I need to say at this point in time of recording is that dslreports.com has become very unreliable in telling you your actual bandwidth. So right now, use speedtest.net and other speed test services that are out there to ascertain your actual upload and download bandwidth. Unfortunately, dslreports.com has become unmaintained by the looks of things and it's just, it's not as reliable as it used to be. So moving on from that, a minor but important positive change is that now in the Wi-Fi section, you can go and hide your SSID. In other words, most people will no longer be able to see your R1 Wi-Fi network when they're looking for Wi-Fi connections to join. It's definitely a positive step in the right direction. However, I would like to see MAC address filtering in the future and hopefully we will see that. Another positive on the Wi-Fi is that you now can disable and enable it at will without losing your settings. A definite plus from the traditional R1 firmware. The standard UPnP capability is there along with port forwarding, but there is no disabled port forwarding rule features there. So yeah. So all you've got is the capability of either editing or deleting it. So once you've added one, it remains active. You just cannot disable it. So you have to delete it if you don't want it to be active. 
What I would like to see in the future is port triggering so that you can remotely connect to devices when you need to. It's a much more secure version of port forwarding and it's, it's needed in certain special cases when you want to like connect to your NAS from, it, from outside the house, for example. Now mentioning these features and improvements I would like to see, I suspect some of you might be a little concerned. I know, you're a lot of gamers. We like things simple. I'm getting a little nervous. Sim saying this, Sim saying that. I suspect what you guys might be nervous about is like, well, firmware updates are going to be a little bit slow and infrequent. We've seen it on the XR500. Is it going to happen in the case for the R1? No, definitely not. <laughs> Believe you me. So I've been in the closed beta testing, as I said, for the past month. And firmware updates were coming out faster than I could handle them. <laughs> it's like, what? Because I've been at work, you know, I do this thing called a day job. But seriously, due to the new architecture, adding on features is going to be significantly easier. Because if I use an analogy, in the past, they would have had to dig up the foundations of their house to rebuild part of the house to give you that new feature. And it would be a right pain in the year ass. That required obviously serious effort to do. So now, because of this new architecture, new features should come much more quickly. And yes, that does mean Ping Assist is coming. So woohoo! It's not there right now, but it will be soon. Now, because of my new house and its internet issues, I've not yet tested the PPPoE function. So I don't know if it works well or it's at the same level as the old R1 firmware, but all the other beta testers would have tested it. And believe you me, it wouldn't have been released if it was uh, problematic. But what I can tell you is that the Duma OS is stable. My first Battlefield 5 stream used Duma OS. Yes, my console and my streaming PC were both connected to it and there were no streaming hitches. Everything worked well. It was great. Uh, yes, yes, you didn't know that, did you? No. So now you can watch. Anyway, so now on the old R1 software, if you were doing real heavy downloading, i.e. you're downloading that brand new game you just bought, or you're preloading it, or you're downloading that big game patch, the R1 would be, well, not very responsive. Well, it, it just wouldn't respond full stop. You'd have to wait for the big download to finish, or know that you need to knock off a few percentage off the global sliders before you started downloading so the R1 would respond if you wanted to interact with it. This is definitely not the case with Duma OS, which is absolutely superb, great stuff. We all know that it's not the most powerful piece of hardware out there, but the software has made it a much more solid experience. And now this is down to NetDuma, and of obviously mainly Ian, because he's the lead uh, architect and developer there. And of course, the beta testers who fed back those test scenarios that introduced issues that, well, needed to be fixed. So it's a really good, nice community effort there. So the interface looks pretty swishy and that's to be expected. But if I'm going to have one gripe with the interface, it's this. It looks great on a 1440p monitor and that's what you're predominantly seeing most of the footage from, a 1440p capture. And it really does look sweet. But when you try and try and use it with a laptop, and let's face it, most people out there will have laptops these days and they all come with like these things called a 720p screen and it's not so nice. The UI, that being the user interface, needs some tweaking. Now, if you try to simply zoom out using the web browser zoom capability, this doesn't really work. So if you've got a custom dashboard that works great, looks sweet, nice on 1440p, it sucks on a lower resolution. And I'm just thinking like those who want to connect to it via tablet in future or mobile phone, they need to go and tweak the UI. Now, having said that this is, you know, a new architecture, that capability of tweaking the UI to work better with lower resolution screens should be in the art of the absolute possible. Obviously, they had to get all the foundations in place first. So this is the whole point of this new architecture. Get those foundations in place and then have the flexibility to put on all the bells and whistles on later, you know, to keep all those gamers happy, including Sim. <laughs> so what else would I like to see? One for the geo filter and its auto ping panel, I'd love to see a country listed. It's great we can easily see, and that means all of us, not just those of us privileged with yellow circles from the past, whether we're connected to a dedicated server or a peer, i.e. another gamer who is the host. So why do I want to see this? Well, it comes back to the whole issue of it's not optimized well on laptop screens. When I'm streaming, I'm on my PC, my 1440p panel is being used for that. So I'm using my laptop to see what's going on in NetDuma, and I just can't see all the information on a laptop screen. Now, 
one can customize your own dashboard and I have, but again, I, I don't want to have to create a, or delete and rip apart my custom dashboard, which works great on my big PC monitor, but doesn't work so great on the laptop. So hopefully this is gonna be you know, fixed and tweaked in the future. Now, obviously the cloud information, the little database that's out there that feeds the geo filter will have to be, you know, tweaked to add in that country because they know where the IP address or block of IP addresses are in the world. So all they've got to do is add a key into their database to say this belongs to that key and that key translates to this country. Slightly database techy there, but I'm keeping it simple. But all they've got to do is add another attribute to say, what country does this IP address belong to? And that'd be really cool because then I don't need to see the geo filter. I know I'm playing against a France host, a Swedish host, a UK host, etc. You get it. Anti-buffer bloat. Now this feature has got the good old off, auto detect and permanently on feature. Now the auto detect is known as when high priority traffic detected. It works pretty well on the PS4, it does. Unfortunately for an end user perspective, it does not work on the Xbox One. I saw the same thing on the XR500. As soon as the Xbox One is powered on, it automatically switches it on so I end up either having to use the on or off buttons, but at least I don't have to constantly slide around those global sliders. So I believe the auto detect is triggered because the Xbox talks much more regularly to its Xbox Live servers compared to the PlayStation. Now, once they tweak this, if that's the root cause, then all of us Xboxes, yes, I'm a dual consoler, will have a working useful feature. And, and therefore it only kicks in when you game, not when you've got the Xbox powered on because it affects the whole house and then the whole house gets throttled. That's not really what I want. At the moment, I have to use the on button or the off button. Having said all of that, the R1 does have a bright future with Duma OS. Now, the R1 has 100% net Duma controlled software. So the turnaround on bug fixing and adding new features is going to be good. It's going to be much more timely. So that's a good thing because you know, us gamers are never impatient, right? <laughs> On the whole, I'm pretty happy with the R1 Duma OS. Downgrading does work. So if you find yourself going, but I really need this feature or something's just not working quite right for you, you still have the option to downgrade your software and remain happy with your R1. So I do hope you found this video informative and you did give it a thumbs up. And one final comment, because I haven't written this in the script, <laughs> is for the geo filter i'd like to see the dedicated servers just stay a little bit longer on that map because it's really really useful when you're optimizing your geo filter it really is at the moment I, I would have to go back to the r1 firmware to see where those servers are to be able to optimize my geo filter and ideally i don't want to be doing that so hope you found this video informative if you did give it a thumbs up and until next time this has been sim